Hi, Vidushi. Hi, Sneha. How are you? I'm good. How are you? So, I'm here for an interview. Are okay. you ready? Sure. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, you've got a nice room. Thank you. Would you mind if Come I on. take a look? <laughs> So, tell us something about yourself. What are you doing here at IIC? Okay, my name is Vidushi Devi. I'm currently I have a second year student here, uh, doing my MTech from Department of Computation and Data Science. Oh, nice. So, do you have a room where we can sit on and talk about your gate experience and your experience here at IIC? Yeah, sure, sure. Let's sit down. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Sneha and I'm here with Vidushi today. Hi. <laughs> so we are going to have some serious conversation on how she prepared for GATE and why she chose to do Masters and about all about the serious department which she is currently enrolled in. So thank you for uh, coming here in my video, in my channel. <laughs> You're both very welcome. <laughs> so I would start with the question about your background. Where did you do your BTEC from? Okay, so I did my BTEC in Computer Science and Engineering from Triple ID Double Pill and I completed it in 2021. Okay, in 2021. So, I want to ask you how did you decide that you want to prepare for GATE? Okay, so while I was in my UG, I wasn't sure whether I was going to pursue academia itself or whether okay. I was going into corporate work. Okay. So, I thought of not to make that decision just after UG. Hmm. So, Masters was a, a short thing for me. Okay. Yeah. So, you mentioned Triple ID Double Pill. So how was the placement scenario there? Oh, it was quite good. Like uh, even Microsoft, Amazon, these companies took uh, people from there for internship as well as for full-time placement. Okay. So the overall scenario, was, it was really good. Like the highest package was nearly around 40 LP or so. Okay. Yeah. So your decision was not based on the placement scenario? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> like, uh, for most of us, it's like that only. Yeah, right. You know? So, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> so, uh, so tell me about how did you prepare for gate. Yeah, like if someone is watching this video and he or she wants to prepare for gate, yeah. what strategy they should follow? Okay, okay. So uh, for my preparation itself, I think there were many mistakes, major no. mistakes. But somehow it worked out for me. But what I learned from it, so finally, the, like when you decide to pursue your gate while you are doing your UG, mm -hmm. you need to have it very clearly in your mind that why are you going to pursue gate? Because that will help you to keep it as a priority throughout your preparation. Mm -hmm. And before you start your preparation, you should have a very well structured plan. Mm -hmm. It might not work out, you might have to make some changes to it, but a plan is a must. Otherwise, mm -hmm. as of that, ki, we keep on studying and we think ki, abhi time hai, uh -huh. and wo That's what happened with me in my first year. So, uh, you should structure mostly like, uh, I guess whenever you complete a subject or like one fourth of a subject, you must go through the questions that are asked for that subject okay. or that part of the subject. Mm -hmm. And use that as a reference when you revise. Okay. So you are focusing on those topics or those questions or those type of questions which actually are asked because for GATE there is a pattern. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you must know that what is asked mm -hmm. and then prepare based on that. Yeah, I think um, that's important that you said that mm -hmm. after completing one fourth of a subject. Because as a minor student many times get stuck in a topic which might not be important. Right, exactly. So to, to get an overview of how the pattern is, because the pattern is not known, you can use the pattern. Right. Yeah, so. Then and by October or so, but the, you should start giving, uh, if not full length, then mm. subject test. Mm. Mm. Like after October, yeah. Ha, ha, boy, boy, because in my first attempt only, mm. I prepared uh, to, na, I started giving this series in January only. Okay. So it was too late for me, right. but I realized it, that it was a mistake. Mm. I focused more, more on theory part. So then in my second attempt, I made sure that by October I finished all of my, okay. yeah, uh, the theory part. <laughs> <laughs> Note taking and note making yeah. and videos and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Vidushi, tell us about where did you prepare from? Okay, I prepared from these online videos of Prother Academy when Ravindra Babura was also separate from an academy. Okay. And he had his own videos, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so, I think they were very precise, mm -hmm. to be honest. Like, okay. if you go on different platforms, you'll find that the course is very extensive. Mm -hmm. they might, the lectures are not that crisp. But those videos, they were very crisp and to the point. Uh, what I felt is, um, uh, in DBMS, DBMS subject, he covered this normalization method extensively in yeah. throughout his videos. Mm -hmm. uh, so my DBS uh, notebook was the thickest, and there were two <laughs> because uh, yeah. So I believe 
for me that subject was not to the point but uh, yeah so uh, yeah even i think that the maths videos they were not that extensive mm-hmm. or question oriented that like uh-huh. maths uh-huh. video should have those mm-hmm. many question practice mm-hmm. that was yeah but uh, mm-hmm. nonetheless i uh, I I would prefer uh, or I suggest um, other students ki having a course any course I'm not saying just any course but there are two three major courses yeah. na mm-hmm. ki from courses you get a uh, you know a, a complete idea of how many hours you have to put exactly yeah exactly. for the gate preparation yeah so I did that actually I calculated huh. how many are the videos for huh. a particular subject like how, how many hours huh. and then and what days will huh. I have to complete that huh. course ha huh. to so these <laughs> things so yeah because because i recently asked a person he did not take any coaching mm-hmm. and he was doing his uh, job and he decided to quit that job but even after that he did not take any coaching he pre- yeah he made his notes from you know the scrolling books ha, nahi, scrolling through internet or uh, there's a, a ace academy mm-hmm. so he ordered their text textbooks so he only uh, referred to the, those text materials how did it work yeah and i don't know <laughs> for me also, <laughs> but i think uh, that's why for major people it might be a different scenario but right. if you are someone who think that you can prepare that way or you have enough amount of time on yeah exactly i think yeah. if you have one year or so mm-hmm. or even less than that you yeah. should have a course yeah. if you have more time go ahead with the yeah. standard books what yeah. can be better than that yeah so matlab wo ek if you have some time constraint to uske liye to go for courses go for courses ha bye to okay so tell us when did you actually start preparing for gate i'll tell you why kyunki na many students are new in also they they are just they have just entered their first year and yeah. they want to know how should they prepare for gate beginning okay. from their first year so what would you suggest okay so i believe that uh, not enough people even if they start early remain committed to gate hmm. like you never know when your uh, like mind switches from pursuing your masters yeah. to having a job hmm. at that time so i would suggest that uh, if not if not starting for the last like i i had gate in february 21 mm. i started at the beginning of april in 2020 okay so uh, one year is sufficient amount of time for you to prepare for it mm. so making any harsh decisions of pursuing any one thing specifically mm. before that one year shouldn't be what people should do right huh. so huh. you should be open to these opportunities yeah. like you also tell ki huh. you should build your resume huh. you should work on other mm. stuff mm. so have that and mm. then on for like in the last year it's mm. you decide what will be your priority what's yeah. your mind i mean till third year at least you should figure out you know your preferences i want to ask in your uh, gate preparation journey uh, what was the most challenging moment for you like emotionally i think that when the placements were going on and even if you are very well committed to some particular thing you do have these second thoughts yeah. these questions in yeah. your mind ki yeah. should i be pursuing mm-hmm. the placements and because uh, any exam that is just 3 hours mm-hmm. or so you, it's kind of a chance based thing uh-huh. so you never know what happens yeah. and when you see the placement session at that chance mm-hmm. raha hai ya other people are getting placed mm-hmm. and they are getting done mm-hmm. so that's a time or jab tum college mein hote hain when you are balancing this mm-hmm. your studies and um, mm-hmm. sometimes it's very frustrating that mm-hmm. ye bhi padhna hai wo assignment uh-huh. bhi karna hai and everything especially jo bachche bhi beaten hote hain wo ye puchte hain ki mere semester exam bhi ho rahe hain aur matlab right. kisko zyada important hai right. right. तो वो वो चीज तो खुद से बैलेंस करनी पड़ेगी ना वो डिफिकल्ट होता है बैलेंस करना और फिर कॉलेज में आई थिंक वी आर वेरी मच इन्फ्लुएंस बाय आवर फ्रेंड्स आल्सो की व्हाट दे आर डूइंग लाइक दोस काइंड ऑफ थिंग गिव्स अस फॉर्मो एग्जैक्टली एंड इवन लाइक ड्यूरिंग माय प्रिपरेशन देयर वाज दिस वन पर्टिकुलर गर्ल शी इज राइट नाउ इन आईटी दिल्ली ओके सो वी प्रिपेयर टुगेदर लाइक इट वाज लॉकडाउन बट वी लाइक गिव ईच अदर रेगुलर अपडेट्स ऑन व्हाट वी हैव डन एंड एवरीथिंग I don't think that I I would have pursued this till the end if she wasn't there. Ha ha. I think it's very important to have someone someone who is preparing with you. I guess it, it helps. I think in my case also I dropped because of a friend. Because, मतलब क्योंकि in 2020 I gave gate mm-hmm. I got 2400 and so I was ready to you know uh, the I I thought at least if I could get prepared at Alawa that was my last resort. Okay. कि if I want to get it mm-hmm. then only I'll drop. Okay. So till September I didn't. prepare for another year so then i was talking to that friend she has got a rank around 1000 okay. so she could have got uh, any I good like nit or triple nit bangalore mm-hmm. those things but even after that she decided to you know give again uh, this give this a chance again so i thought i thought if i not do it that i'll regret it after ha right? na oh, it was a big decision you know, because aspect. because we were good mates and we used to prepare it together mm-hmm. So for that reason, I decided to do it again. Good choice. Why? <laughs> Why? Now you are doing 
I'm taking computational data science here in IIT. Okay. Yeah. So for me, I uh, didn't really know about this department okay. earlier, mm -hmm. and even even I knew about AI, artificial intelligence, but I wasn't sure if I am really into it because okay. I've never done any subjects on right. machine learning or anything mm -hmm. like that. So for me, the safe resort was uh, taking computer science uh, department. Sure. So. Uh, Tell us about uh, this computational data science department here in IIT. Okay, if you visit the website of CDS, <laughs> you'll find that it's interdisciplinary department. So what happens is like people from very versatile different backgrounds, they come like they use their knowledge and apply it in computation like data science stuff. Okay. That's the summary of it. Okay. Yeah, so it's uh, like open to all kind of thing, but finally you apply it to data science or computation or some scalable system or things like that. Okay. So like you said, interdisciplinary group. It means Anybody who have given gate from any uh, subject, exactly, they can enroll in it. Yeah, what you have to have is either you have a four-year degree for your UG, hmm. or even if you have done a three-year BSc program, you should have an MSc in the same thing. Okay. So it should be in some science background, hmm. and with a valid gate score, you can apply. It. Okay, so they can uh, uh, they can uh, sit in gate exam for any department. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's an interesting thing to know about. But uh, tell me about is the gate score similar for everybody i mean when you get called for an interview uh, is there some reservation for different different department here or things like that what do you think? okay i don't exactly know whether the reservation thing is taken care of internally or not but what they do is like for, for different departments that are being applied like if you check the cutoff list even you'll find that around 10 13 departments will be there so 10 10 or 13 okay. departments you'll find them there. Okay, like DTEC, Mechanical, Civil? Mechanical, Civil, Materials, oh. Metallurgy, EC, CS, oh. anything. Oh. And uh, Biotech, even Biotech as well. Okay, so if you are doing uh, DTEC from any of these departments and also giving gate from any of these departments, you can at least... Sure. Yeah. Your gate score will be uh, useful in here. Like mm -hmm. you can apply through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so you'll apply through your gate score. Uh, they uh, find a cutoff for each of these departments mm -hmm. for different categories and then you'll uh, get a call letter uh, for your online test okay. and after that online interview. So 70% weighted is given to your gate score. Okay. The 30% is combined with the fees, the written test as well as the interview. Okay. Yeah. So I think it's a great opportunity for other departments to, you know, transition into the IT sector, right? Yes. Okay. <coughs> so you have mentioned online test and an interview. Yeah. So tell us about if a gate aspirant should prepare for anything else before going yeah, okay. Yeah. So you are applying from different departments. So mm -hmm. it's understood that you might not be that into coding, right? Okay. So uh, before your interview and you're like after gate you have a lot of time, like mm -hmm. till the results come out, mm -hmm. then you apply in here and mm -hmm. these test dates come. Mm -hmm. So within that time, the people who aren't that uh, well versed with coding or mm -hmm. haven't had mm -hmm. uh, had done it. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they prepare for it. Like you can find many courses. Like even CS people we do mm -hmm. learn it online, right? Mm -hmm. So they learn coding. Mm -hmm. They try their hands on it a little bit. Because mm -hmm. it's not that the questions are very daunting or anything in the online test, but you do have to have a basic knowledge of coding. For yeah. That. I mean it's obvious if you want to transition into exactly. IT, so <laughs> exactly. you will need so, it. Yeah. Yes. If you are planning on applying, you will have that ready clear in mind. Mm -hmm. seek me at mm -hmm. some point of time. Mm -hmm. So uh, and then like you need to have like the basic Maths that okay. was in gate itself, mm -hmm. have a read through it, mm -hmm. that will be enough for your interview. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so DSA and maths. Okay, so in interview, they ask basic question regarding uh, maths. Yeah, or probability, okay. probability okay. and linear algebra. Okay, probability yeah. and linear algebra. And I think mostly uh, people cover this or so. Ah, it's but, covered in uh, gate. It's not like it's not compulsory to have that knowledge. Like, I guess if you no, no, you should have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit of maths, like uh, the basics of linear algebra and probability, mm -hmm. that's all you need to mm -hmm. study. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, tell us about how it's different from uh, AI and CSA. Like, uh, okay. in basic terms, because we all know we uh, all sit for the same companies in the placements, huh? and we are allowed to take each other's course. Definitely. But, uh, you know, to the core of it, <laughs> what's the difference? Okay, so you'll find that in each of these departments, how the course structure is, it's different. Mm -hmm. And how people are dealing with the project, mm -hmm. that is also different. Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, it's more like, if you look at courses, mm -hmm. you'll find that CSA may, there is nothing that involves major mathematics in it. Mm -hmm. CBS may, a CS student will find that, uh, like, the maths here is extensive in almost all of the subjects. Okay. So, yeah, you have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. If you are in from mechanical background or maths background, it's very easy for you to deal mm -hmm. with these courses. Mm -hmm. 
and AI made its very mad six sense and, and I guess the courses are really difficult. If you look from our perspective, they are difficult. Uh, I guess CGPAs are also a yeah. little bit low. <laughs> yeah, like uh, you look at Stoma, so uh-huh. it's a difficult subject for us. For them, it's like one of the easiest ones mm-hmm. where you can score well. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I don't know how true is that, but I have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. and uh, yeah, how they deal with your dissertation project is also very different. Like your guides uh, won't be pressuring you too much, or the overall like they don't. Yeah, in in our department, it's totally dependent on the advisor you've got. Yeah, the different advisor you do differently. So, uh, but as an overall view, mm-hmm. like uh, our department is so that they want you to give enough time to it. Like, okay. yeah, even if you're a postdoc student, you mm-hmm. must have that research aptitude. Okay. 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 So as a <coughs> As a CS student, uh, did you feel that uh, CGS is uh, easier for you or maybe not for others? Not at all. <laughs> I think if I was from a mechanical background or I'd be a CMS in maths, mm-hmm. that would have been better for me. Mm-hmm. And one course specifically you get help, like there is one hardcore course, ISS, Introduction to Scalable System. Mm-hmm. There you will find that you as a CS student, that comes up, but that's it. But at least in placements, you guys have the upper hand, right? Because they have to, uh, you know, mechanical and civil and other departments yeah. have to, you know, start from the beginning to learn C, C++ or any language. Mm-hmm. At least you and by the time of placement, mm-hmm. the amount of assignment that you have done, mm-hmm. anybody coming from any background mm-hmm. will be okay with it. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. So, so I, I wanted to ask you this, because uh, many students, uh, you know, do not want to ask for money from their parents for their master's, right? right. So many might not consider, because MBA is very uh, expensive okay. in India. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to ask how expensive master's is here in India. Okay. Is there any stipend or extra scholarships that are provided to uh, students here? Okay. So if you have applied from a valid gate school or not sponsored students, mm-hmm. you get, like everybody gets a stipend of 12,400 per month, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and in our department, like uh, there are uh, fellowships that are offered. Mm. So different companies who are funding your lab or funding your department, they or in their uh, charity work, it's like mm. uh, yeah, trust, yeah. yeah, the trust mm. uh, kind of thing. So they provide these uh, fellowships. So mm. like like the one I got. So mm. the total amount of fellowship is ten lakhs. Okay. Right? So that is divided into uh, what you get as a monthly stipend. Oh. So that is made uh, like instead of twelve thousand four hundred, mm. the one who are a fellow student get twenty five thousand per month. Okay. And then you have a contingency amount of one lakh ten thousand, mm-hmm. which you can use to buy iPad or laptop or anything that will help you in your yeah. research or the yeah. postdoc and everything. Yeah. And uh, then there are t- travel grants as well. Mm-hmm. So a specific amount is said that if you want to travel for some con- conference, so that will be used in it. Or uh, then your advisor gets a little bit amount of money as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. uh, like whatever is left of all this, uh, it's or some specific amount okay. in some fellowship is okay. given to them. Like the breakup of different fellowship is different, mm. but this fellowship is for women as well as mm. like three three boys of our department also oh. got these. So oh, their fellowship you didn't mention what what fellowship? Yeah, right. So mine was Sony, mm. and uh, there is Citrix. Okay. You also got Citrix, mm. right? Huh. So there is Citrix. Then there is one from Siemens, one from G Healthcare. Okay. So these uh, the one offered to the boys was a little bit different. Like mm. what happens is when you uh, get admitted and everything is done, mm-hmm. you receive a mail from your chair okay. that they have nominated you. Like all the girls are nominated mm-hmm. for these uh, girls specific fellowship. Mm-hmm. Wherein you have to send your resume. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, from your resume, you are like, there are internal committees for selection. They look at your resume and everything and they select you for these fellowships. Mm-hmm. And just you receive a mail from the <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, so the boys, uh, what they got was like the G Healthcare Fellowship. You get a lab, like it's okay. specific ki agar ye guide ne tumko apne lab mein select kiya, okay. to it's with the fellowship itself. Ki tumko lab oh. bhi mil jayega, tumko fellowship bhi mil jayega. And you'll also have uh, internship fixed. Oh. Ki jab uh, ye internship wala time aayega, hmm. you'll have that internship fixed. Okay, so there must be a lot of competition <laughs> for that advisor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody submits resume for that. <laughs> so, can you tell us about uh, the course structure of CDS department? Yeah. How courses are divided throughout the semesters? Okay. So a postdoc student, uh, they'll have to complete a total of 64 credits, okay. out of which 28 are for, for your dissertation project okay. and 36 are your course credits. Okay. Under those course, course 36 credits, it's divided into three categories. Okay. Your hardcore courses, mm-hmm. your soft, soft core courses, and then you can take electives. Okay. So hard course, hardcore courses are like you have to, like it's fixed for every semester that this is a hardcore course. Mm-hmm. So everybody in the C- series department mm-hmm. uh, has to 
uh, be done with that course mm-hmm. and that that semester itself. Mm-hmm. The soft core is more like you have to complete ten credits of soft core. Okay. Now it's up to you in which semester you are taking a soft core, but mm-hmm. there is a pool of courses in mm-hmm. soft core. You have to pick from there and complete your ten credits mm-hmm. by yeah by the end. Mm-hmm. And uh, the electives or so remaining credits, whatever are remaining, it, you can complete from your electives. So that can be taken from any department. So okay. that's only on to you. Ki uh, what area are you going to pursue? So take your courses according to that. So um, tell us about how you guys are uh, assigned projects or advisor yeah. and in which project you are working currently. Okay, so my lab is ATCC, uh, Environment Techniques for Computational Genomics. So what we do is we de- uh, we actually work on genomic data, okay. currently the biggest data of all. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we develop algorithms for how to deal with that data, how to okay. improve the errors in that data. Mm-hmm. So it's like uh, all the genome it's converted to text file okay. where each of these nucleotides are mentioned. So we work on that data. Okay. My project is on genomic data compression. So we're building a tool to compress the data, which will have some additional features over that. Uh, so what happens is like after your first semester, mm-hmm. the first winter break hota hai, within that month you'll have to decide ki which lab are you interested in. Okay. Because the labs are like uh, very diverse in mm-hmm. serious department. Mm-hmm. So it's mostly on what background you already have knowledge on. Thus, what are you interested in, okay. right? So, you can work on database, you can work on algorithms, you can work on scalable systems, you can work on these maths equations. So, there are labs for that as well. And uh, you can work on parallel computing, you can work on yeah. machine learning, on computer vision. So, all these labs are available. You decide that what you want to pursue, then you write a mail to that professor, you apply for that lab. Mm-hmm. Everybody has their own selection criteria. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, Maybe they'll give you some paper to read and then present okay. to check your understanding. Okay. Or they can take a short interview of yours. Okay. Or they can just say, Ki, Abhi ka ke apne marks bhej do. <laughs> <laughs> and they can select you based on that. <laughs> so after that, you assign the labs mm-hmm. and then kind of inducted into the procedure. Yeah, even in CSA, it's the same. Every professor has their own criteria. Oh, yeah, and all of these are the <laughs> that you mentioned. <laughs> okay. So now we want to talk about. Your currently plays in Qualcomm as a MA engineer, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so tell us about how you prepared for it. Okay. And and is it possible uh, for a BTech student who might not have a you know good resume because because I also didn't have a good resume <laughs> when, I, when I entered here and I asked one of my senior ki sir M Tech gate to clear ho gaya, but because uh, just after one year you will have placement. Ha, right, right. Right. So uh, how would I make a good resume in that time span, mm-hmm. span while doing my MTech. So my uh, senior also suggested me don't worry about it, you will have enough subjects like that. Exactly. So wahi, uh, I want to ask ki, how did you prepare your resume and what are the preparation strategies that you followed <laughs> right. and, uh, <laughs> and what are the plans that you made but never followed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe we'll talk about that. Yes. <laughs> okay, so, First, to soothe things out and to console everybody, mm-hmm. I mentioned nothing from my UZ in my resume. Okay. Nothing at all. So, what happens is like uh, you either choose uh, this SD roles mm-hmm. or choose data science roles. Mm-hmm. Or some people, if possible, can work for both. But mm-hmm. it's the thing that you're starting to prepare your career, you're competing towards mm-hmm. people who are only one for one. So, mm-hmm. you need to think like that. Mm-hmm. So, you need to pick one. Okay. Now, what do you do? You will take courses accordingly. Mm-hmm. Your electives are there, which are soft core. Mm-hmm. If you're uh, applying for a uh, SD role, so you'll pick things that are more uh, core courses, mm-hmm. right? Uh, like for computer science. Mm-hmm. And if you're not, then you'll obviously choose uh, courses that are more mm-hmm. machine learning oriented and that will give you insights and help you later mm-hmm. on in data science roles. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so overall, what for a data science role, what you need to do is you have to have knowledge of probability, mm-hmm. linear algebra, mm-hmm. stats, okay. machine learning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Mm. And, uh, and but, but so yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. it is. <laughs> okay, so for interviews, like they won't check how extensive you are coding and everything. Mm. Mostly, uh, like if uh-huh. you go for very uh, daunting companies mm. or interviews like Amazon, mm. they'll thoroughly check you for mm. uh, coding itself. Mm. But as if you see, uh, like you should have to practice, have to have practice code to get through the test to the interviews. Mm. Like that is a major block mm. or bottle, like you mm. said. So coding ki practice to you must have. Mm-hmm. Like even if you are not extensively working on like dynamic programming or things, but still do basic DSA hota hai, that needs to be practiced. So I think many people get doubt hota hai ki you self doubt hota hai coding ko leke ki utne fluent nahi hai coding mein kisi language mein. Mm-hmm. So what do you think? How uh, easier it is to grab a good placement uh, coming into a good institution where 
the placements are fine or off campus placements okay so post ki to sabse badi baat hai serious mein you will look at these examples right jahan pe they never coded in the league but still they are grabbing really good placements right so that's one thing ki within this one year or so mm-hmm. they are practicing regularly mm-hmm. even if you are going just through the assignments jo tumhe apne courses ko milte hain but going through them like working it out on your own mm-hmm. uh so finally kya hota hai you get good enough in coding mm-hmm. like companies we they don't require you to know everything right mm-hmm. so jaise mera interview tha so they didn't ask me to code in c++ if i was comfortable with c that mm-hmm. was okay with them aur unko kya chahiye ki you know how to do your point use mm-hmm. right तो को ऐसे बेसिक डेटा स्ट्रक्चर आता है व्हेन टू यूज व्हाट इन इन मतलब बेसिक्स अगर तुम्हें आते हैं तो इट्स गुड बट जब से तुम अपने मास्टर्स में तुम एडमिशन uh, लेते हो टिल द टाइम ऑफ योर प्लेसमेंट्स इट्स सफिशिएंट इनफ पीरियड कि अगर तुम पहले कोडिंग में नहीं भी अच्छे हो तो यू विल बिकम गुड एनफ टू सेट फॉर दीस प्लेसमेंट्स आई एम गेट गुड प्लेसमेंट्स आई थिंक दिस इज ना ऑफ कैंपस नॉर्मली भी जब कहीं भी YouTube वगैरह लिंक्डइन खोलो तो बहुत होता है कि डी से एक्सपेंसिव चाहिए होती है बहुत अच्छी चाहिए होती है एंड आई थिंक इट्स ट्रू टू सम एक्सटेंड अगर तुम ऑफ कैंपस अप्लाई करते हो एग्जैक्टली एग्जैक्टली कि क्योंकि इन माय एक्सपीरियंस कैंपस प्लेसमेंट में मैंने इतना स्ट्रिक्टनेस नहीं देखा क्योंकि हम खुद ही आपस में बात कर रहे थे कि हमें डीपी अच्छे से नहीं आता यार राइट हां नहीं जाता क्या था हां तो वही सब वही सब चीजें तो आई थिंक पर अगर तुम मास्टर्स अगर तुम्हारा कॉलेज इवन अगर अच्छे टायर्ड थी कॉलेज से अगर बहुत सारे बच्चे और वहाँ पे अच्छे प्लेसमेंट नहीं है बिकॉज देट वॉज द सीनारी इन माई कॉलेज बेस्ट केस वहाँ सेवन एल पी ए था टी सी एस देती थी हमारे कॉलेज में क्या दो ही कंपनी आती थी विप्रो और टी सी एस क्योंकि Uh, no that happens that's a common thing for many colleges b tech mein to private hi zyada hai ya s p s t colleges mein zyada hai to wahi wahi cheez main keh rahi hu ki if you are coming from that background and you think it's very much impossible for you to grab a good placement yeah. to to masters is a good plan maybe it's a long path but it it's an easy way out there mujhe kya lagta hai masters is always a good option kyunki tumhe nahi pata kya pata tumhe acha lagta hai tum usme phd karo kar ke aage jaake jao to woh life pasand aata hai ha to ha to ye wo option bhi rehta na tumhara matlab aur क्योंकि देखो ना इतने सारे लोग तो जॉब करने के बाद यहाँ आ रहे हैं मास्टर्स करने जस्ट टू एक्सप्लोर मोर अबाउट है ना कि दे आर इंटरेस्टेड क्योंकि यू डोंट वांट टू हैव दैट रिग्रेट लाइक आई हैव ट्राइड एग्जैक्टली और मोस्टली लोगों से तो मैंने ये सुना है कि इफ यू एंटर वंस यू एंटर विद योर जॉब एंड एवरीथिंग यू डू रियलाइज की नहीं मास्टर्स करना चाहिए और पढ़ना चाहिए so so that's the scene for masters so I think all in all masters is worldwide I think IIC आके आपको ये तो शोर हो जाएगा कि आपको research करना ही करना है या नहीं करना है exactly like when I entered I thought कि most probably I'll go for a PhD somewhere outside but within a few months or so मुझे लगा कि नहीं इतना भी मजा नहीं आता but I'm going for a job so तो मैं पूछना चाहती हूँ कि how would you describe your IIC journey till now like it's all, it's almost one year we have been here in campus right it 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 was hectic sometimes it was daunting but all in all it was worth it like agar baaki sab cheeze chhod do to for this campus itself i think it was worth it and like you meet people who are more like you like you find your crowd here and uh, or you will know how to deal with all kinds of stressful situations like that uh, like yeah koi <laughs> iic kar liya to aage kuch dikkat nahi hai everything is safe here <laughs> okay to mera friend hai wo bhi keh raha tha ki iic kaisi pipeline hai jiske andar se tum mujh ho gaya as a different person aur bahar ho gaya as a different person bahar sha to more experience to tumne kaha maine kya kya nahi dekh liya boy और एक बार ये भी होते ना कि तुम यहाँ पे अपने प्रोफेसर्स को देखते हो यू सी देयर लाइफ तो इन अ प्रीमियम इंस्टीट्यूट अगर तुम ऐसे प्रोफेसर्स के लाइफ देखते हो तो मे बी यू विल बी मोर एकेडमी ऑरिएंटेड लेटर ऑन सो ये भी एक बार होती है ऊपर से बीटेक में जैसे हमने ऐसे कोई एक्सटेंसिवली कोई सब्जेक्ट नहीं पढ़ा होता उस रिसर्च वाला तरीके से कि रिसर्च में कैसे चीजें काम करती हैं तो यहां पे जब चीजें उस हिसाब से होती हैं तो तुम्हें एक्सपीरियंस मिलता है कि अच्छा ऐसा होता है रिसर्च यू कैन डिसाइड फॉर योरसेल्फ हाँ तुम उस लेवल पे पढ़ते हो तो तुम्हें अपना इंटरेस्ट भी समझ आ जाता है क्योंकि इंटरेस्ट के लिए यू हैव टू नो समथिंग इन डी इन डेप्थ ये अभी इस टाइम गेट के लिए नहीं ज़्यादा बेटर थे मतलब आराम से तो मैं सोचती हूँ उस टाइम पे मैं लगता होगा कि कि तब पर अपने हिसाब से पढ़ते थे ना ये पढ़ने का मज़ा आ मतलब मैं उनके लिए कह रही हूँ कि जो सोच रहे हैं कि गेट खत्म हो गया तो वो सबसे पी पॉइंट है क्योंकि उसके बाद पी थे खाई में गिरोगे जब अगर किसी अच्छे कॉलेज से एंटर करोगे तब खाई में गिरने का मतलब तात्पर्य है 